Now, Mojo, we have a little kind of camo lineup here. So Swift, Red and Black are in the red side defending Go Hard. Black and Purple are on attack on the blue side. Well, Gohar definitely chose to go for the fight version because they are not even trying to go for the one cap, which is in my eyes better option here because we've seen already that that cap can easily get handled. Uh, and they do have those two tier 9 budgets. What's interesting, I'm, I want to see will they actually dare to push Dreamlike in the corner with those two budgets covered by the remaining push of their tanks because then he will actually not have a great uh, cover from the rest of his team. It's interesting because we have saw some teams try this where they try and catch out the tank down the bottom. Now Magus got up into that area, not spotted yet. And we've seen, I think it was Breakneck yesterday getting absolutely wrecked in that area and getting spotted earlier on. But it's super dangerous to do it because it relies that uh, the rest of your team actually has to apply pressure also. So these budgets are not focused, but there you go. Again, they're playing aggressive here on the ghost town. There is no child play here. Niall shooting down into Atmo, Cramwagon at front, Niall taking a lot of damage for this as Atmo takes even more shots because there is an overmatch here from Gohard as Atmo gets dropped. Failware taking a lot of damage in return here, he might go down for Gohard. Actually he can survive as Skylex gets focused as the next tank here from Gohard. Annihilator's taking damage so quickly Swift have lost two tanks here to start with and Gohard don't look like they're going to ease up anytime soon. It was a really lucky moment for Gohard, they, they actually managed to permatrack Skylex there and take him out in such fashion. That was a really crucial play because if he withdrew and started the reload actually Gohard would be a problem even with dropping the first tank down. You can see here Dreamlike is taking a little bit of damage. Now Crespex is being focused on trading shots here with Maga. One more shot, Maga will get the kill here. Nope, he misses right over the front of the tank. Annihilator taking a bit of damage there in his mix, but Maga does pick up the kill here on Crespex. Swift are down four tanks here to seven on Gohard. Gohard are a bit bloodied and bruised here, but three of their tanks are still on full health. No, this is more than enough to close the game well. It's 9,000 compared to less than six. Yes, there is some uh, closing in by Swift now, but they si simply don't have enough guns to deal with this. Crossfire coming in here again from Zafarchek and Karibari now. Kaizu coming down to corner here. Mihailov and the Wolf are the only ones left. Mihailov can't take any hits at all in that AMX. Everything will just chew through it. There's no way it's going to bounce a single shot as Kaizu's going to come off reload here and wreck him as he does. But oh, Kaizu actually got his gunner damage there in return. Dreamlike is the last person, well, surviving here with the Wolf. But now the wolf is being focused at. Look at this, it's just a... Uh, well... It's kind of a Pac-Man game. It's a bit of a bullying going on at the moment, yes. It's just like a Pac-Man, they're just chewing them up slowly and going ra rather easy there. Strong opening here by Gohard. They rely that uh, Swift will be kind of stretched and they will try to play position and control the map. And they actually managed to punch through it. They didn't take that much damage for the beating they gave. Yep, um, Gohard able to survive with all seven tanks still available to them as well. That's honestly a luck factor that they survived that initial uh, engagement without losing a single tank. And uh, there was a bit of luck, you can say, with tracking, perma tracking Skylex there. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. They did a daring move and it worked for them. That's all that matters here. Yeah, sure. I mean, a win's a win, as we always say. Let's have a look at the post battle stats and see who came out top. Cowberry is wow. finally carrying Print failure. Screen. Print screen. Failure coming in second damage despite taking an absolute pummeling himself. Print screen carry for the future generations there. There we go, finally on the first spot here. Daki sitting watching this going, yes, yes, finally. But Daki also has Annihilator who was sixth place there. Oh dear, so do I, I think. <laughs> Are you laughing to your uh, fellow agent? Yep, I'm laughing to you guys because I need to beat you guys. Well, Zafarchik on his 10th place. At least we know Wojtek will be very happy about that one. But never mind, entire second page is marked by Swift presence. Nice, nicely done there by Gohard. Not going for a cap and just saying, okay, let's try and get a fight going, you know? Let's try and get over matches. Well, as I said, though the, the lineup they have is rather quick and it has multiple possibilities attached to it. You can go for the quick cap, you can go for rotation because Swift has obviously pretty campy setup with Emil and Kranwagen. They're not the best rotation tanks, they're really good in cooldown. But if you're pressed forward, you cannot really deal with that kind of pressure, so it doesn't work out. And uh, I think this was a really good choice by Gohard, obviously. 
and it worked out. Yeah. Um, do you think we're going to take round two? How can I know? I need to see the tanks first. I'm asking you before you see the tanks. Do you just think, Mojo? Do you just feel it in your bones? It's like asking someone, why are you not Buddhist? Because I'm born in Europe, man. No, when I see the tanks, I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay. Well, we're going to have to wait a little bit for the lineups at the moment, Mojo. Thank you. So, Mojo, based on your experience of these previous two teams, who do you think is going to win? Gohard looks much better in the late time, so I believe they have actually higher chance here to win. There you go. That so wasn't that's too difficult, was it? Analytics, entertainment. Uh, you gamble, hey, I wait. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I always gamble. It worked for me yesterday. That's where we're going to see Daki in a bow tie tomorrow. It's I'm going nice, to enjoy it's that. It's a nice, pretty purple bow tie. You should also apply Daki. some, you know, some pink rouge here to, to make it stand out. Daki should hopefully be wearing white, like shirt, his lovely white shirt tomorrow, and then this big purple bow tie. I mean, I should have got a big comedy one. That would have been even better. But how big no, is this one? It's, it's, it's about like normal size, but it will just be really obvious because we normally never wear ties or bow ties. So I can't wait. I can't wait. To still, oh, really, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Should have now, thrown, you should have thrown some makeup in that. Let's event focus, also. focus on the today and the here and now. So let's look at the lineups for round two here on Ghost Town between Swift and Go Hard. Any surprise picks? Swift again playing slow. Double two and Emils you. and double Ivan Handras. And then I7. Like this, this lineup is so slow, man. Go hard playing with E100 is good for decapping. We've seen in if they're in like a tank like IS7 in a cap or Emil. <laughs> Again, I would like I like more the Go hard pick. Just a bit more. The only danger in it is it is FV heavy. If they don't make it work and it gets like caught by any of the Swift guys, it's gonna burn. It's gonna lose an Amorek and it's gonna burn again. So that's the only problem, honestly, for the Go hard in this moment. They must make sure he's not in the front line somewhere. Daki was talking about previously how there might be cap tactics where you can use the meal going we, hold down. We actually seen Kazna attempt to do it. It didn't work out. It was decapped by a simple tank like Udes. Constantly. Udes, because he had the top angle on it, yeah. Yes. And um, again, you will have Ru doing that here. I'm trying to work out what Swift might be doing here with it. I mean, I'd love to be able to say, yeah, they're going to go for a base 2 tactic because we very rarely see teams fight over base 2. But the danger is... is Base 2, you have four different areas you can be shot from, then you've got the further angles behind that. It's like wide open unless you're trying to stick everyone in the corner or something like that. So um, maybe it's going to be a bait, an attempted bait or something, but I, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting round to watch out and see how they do. Um, I believe if this is a cap tactic, it's going to evolve around the center cap. Center cap, okay. Well... Let's see what it's going to be. We can jump into the round here. Swift red team attacking and Gohard blue team are going to be defending. Well, let's see what these boys have. They're ready for us. Mikhailov is going around that area for the center. Two E100s. It's not big rotation, but it's a big punch force when the battle actually starts. Gohard, as usual in their own tradition, is going super aggressive with a big advancement toward them. They're trying to cut them off from the positions initially already. Look at this, the Farchik is doing this aggressive spot with breaking some of the houses while driving, Zafarchik. buying some of the shells. Zafarchik being Zafarchik. <laughs> oh, Failware, nice roll there from Mihailov he's actually pushing there. already. Atmospheric going to push into Failware. Does Failware have any teammates behind him as Mihailov is there behind him as well? But 740, big hit there going into Atmospheric there. He's going to have to back off. In the meantime, Failware's taking a lot of damage. So is Zafarchik, so is Kaizu, and so is Annihilator all taking damage. Let's have a look at the team speak actually and listen to hear what we can see. Go запушим Е100 и Б школу. Да, давайте я прямо запушим. Я прямо. Сзади 14, сзади 14. Сзади конвайки. 9 секунд заберутся 13-го. Давай, давай, давай. Я 6 секунд еще. Бата, попусти, конвайки, бата, 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 бата. А я... Фрикил, фрикил. Ну, Крест, пробуй бата дать. Вам надо вперед пушить, сзади дать. конвайки. Крест, забери, 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 
Okay, now it's looking like Swift nearly lost it there, Mojo. They're still capable of losing it if they don't start focusing Carry Barry and Coca-Cola here. But Free Kill waiting to come off reload is going to clip into the back of Coca-Cola. Carry Barry is going to pick up a tank now, so we have only Mikhailov and Crest picks. It's quite visible being Carry Barry being with 2000 HP there. This is going to be actually a deciding factor here. Failware is doing a lot of damage and Mikhailov fell off, so there is only Crest picks here. It's not going to happen. Gohard is taking the map 2 to 0, and their 25% is beating 83% of speed by far! Carry Barry sitting there on full health. Is it because Barry's just so good at dodging shots? Is it because Barry's been hiding? I think it's because he's good at dodging shots, Mojo. Well, no. <laughs> His Chris Mix just comes around and he goes, BAM! You're supposed 7 7 to the face, Barry. I'm not down and out yet. Yeah, let's see how that happens when Coca Cola comes there. Go harder defending as well, so Crespix has to play aggressive. Go harder, just like, here we are. Come get one of us, mate. They're just, they're just are waiting for Kerry Berry to come close to the reload. And then Coca Cola will push to be a punching bag. Oh, they are goes. just trying to keep him away from running away, but he's not oh, a medium, anyways. Peekaboo. Coca Cola apps down below him. Crispix doesn't have the angle, although it does have dank gun depression. Carry Barry coming round the corner to finish him off. And there we have it. Gohard 2 0 up here against Swift. And a perfect start for Gohard and a bit of a nightmare start for Swift. As we said, aggressive play by Gohard is paying off. They're really catching Swift there. Uh, they're actually outplaying them player by player in the moment because I believe in my moment Swift had a victory there, but they just chose to push into Gohard there around the corner. Yeah, yeah on, when you were listening to the team speak, I was kind of confused of what was going on. Um, this is what we actually mentioned. Daki mentioned it, and I, I questioned Freekill about it in an interview. Swift, when they're playing against more patient teams, kind of do better, but when a team is aggressive against them, they don't seem to react as well to it. Yes, uh, so far so good for there for Gohard. I believe his Steve Tap actually stopped in one moment and killed the 1 1 3. It was isolated behind. Uh, they would be able to turn this around for them, but they chose to do as they did, and you can see the result. Coca Cola is doing 4,000 damage here Six in shots. his Ivan Handra. Failure still on that third page, even Gary Berry. Coca Cola is picking up three kills as well. He was a beast in that battle. Uh, Mihailov, one of the top three, or well, one of the three players we highlighted there from. Um, Swift, who can potentially do a lot of damage. One of them was as well at Mo. And oh, Daki, oh, Daki, oh, Daki. Don't look at number 14 right now. <sighs> yeah, about that. <laughs> oh, you've got him as well, Mojo. Sorry oh, about that, yo, mate. you just, Sorry. You just sort of I just didn't noticed, remember, I just right? No, I just noticed that um, Failware's not on the second page, though, so. I'm happy. I was going for numbers because I think Gohard had like three games this week. I was the same. Like, you always try and pick teams where they've got three three matches because you're going to get potentially the higher points um, from your players. But then if they have two bad games and one good game, then that could bring the average down. It's just like, uh, I guess players get motivated. They play one week bad and then they play the one week good and you sell them after playing yeah. bad or do you buy them after playing good like, and they're just like complete wreck after It's that. like last week, Milan didn't play. And everyone panicked. And then if you put Mayland in your team this week, like I did, he didn't play in that first round for oops. And that was terrifying. I was yep. like, not again. And then he was there in the rounds after that. And he was doing consistent damage. Milos was doing consistent damage as well for um, oops as well. So usually you can kind of bank on certain players doing consistent damage. Niall is a bit like mm, right now with maybe just the vehicles he's playing. Um, but yeah. Um, fantasy picks and players hard to choose at the moment, but that's fantasy. Let's get back to these matches right now between Gohard and Swift. Our next map is going to be. Oh. I don't know because I'm looking Himmelsdorf, at the wrong Himmelsdorf, list. Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf. Okay, <laughs> Himmelsdorf. Um I think when we get a next kind of break, I'll quickly write down what we have so I know. Himmelsdorf what we're doing. and uh, let's see. Gohard is defending and Swift is attacking. Gohard. On the defense, and Gohar has around 80% win rate I'll on Himmelsdorf, which defense, is rather, yeah. rather a strong play there for them. But on the last map, Swift had over 80%, and Gohar had measly 25% win rate, and they still won it. Doesn't so mean that means that means Gohar are defending. So we're not going to get Gohar's team speak this round, but we will get Gohar's team speak. So we will get their team speak on defense now. Okay, okay. so. 
Kill Wojtek. Okay, so Blame Wojtek. it's going to be Gohard attacking to start off with, and it's going to be Swift defending. And um, yeah, can you hear the music playing in the background, Mojo? Unfortunately, yes. I'm just thinking how, in what ways I'm going to torture Wojtek. Yes, I think somebody <laughs> is behind the scenes pressing multiple buttons at the moment and not really knowing what they're pressing. Wojtek is the League Ops admin, so I'm going to just blame, blame, blame for every Wojtek. problem. Blame hashtag, Wojtek, hashtag, hashtag always. blame Wojtek, always. Still, it doesn't uh, delete the advantage that Gohar has with 2-0 to zero in this match in a rather quick succession there. A couple of minutes of each game for Ghost Town. It will do a nice boost in shorting up the length of matches on Ghost Town here. So the statistics will look the nicer. And uh, it does show a great promise for them in the remainder of the match because they managed to play both sides aggressive. Yep, well, let's have a look at these lineups, Mojo, and see the vehicles being used. Gohard playing against Swift here in attack. This is a setup we've seen more than once. Kran Wagen and FV405 TD. So a lot of rotation there and some punch. On other hand, Swift playing with the mouse and a tier 9 Waffen. Waffen is going to use the little big gun or the big little gun? Uh, it's going to use the standard gun. Like, not the, the max one with 750 alpha because that's an inaccurate and it uses heat, which can really sell you out in some moments of the game. Okay, so we are going to get Gohard team speak this round. Um, Gohard on the attack mojo, do you think this is going to be just a push around Banana Road or just going to be something into um, base number one? I think they're going to wait their chances and wait, can they hit something with this 405? <laughs> Especially they need to see where Mouse is because the, there is a lot of clippers here for Swift and they can uh, run in some trap. They don't want that. Yeah, they have to be careful not to get drawn into shooting the Mouse. That's not going to be beneficial. We need to get the damage dealers out of the way. Let's find out. Can they do it? Go hard tune up against Swift. We're going to Himmelsdorf. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Swift, red and black team. Red side defending. Gohard, blue side attacking with that fantastic purple and black camo. So let's see. Zafarczyk is going for the hill, but actually it doesn't look like he's followed by a TD as I would expect. I would expect Kolka collapsed in that 405 to follow him up to get some angles. Again, Gohard is playing a different and proactive, which is good because it means that cannot be easily judged what they're doing. So they're making at the moment a trap if there is a swift uh, pushing, if swift push in the lower part of the city with those five clippers. And uh, they're just trying to wait it out and see will it happen. On the other hand, swift is more than happy to wait it out. They're just playing with fast rotation tanks, but they're not doing anything about it. Shot from Mihailov there, blind shooting up onto the hill. Now, Kaizu shot some barrels out there, so that might have gave them some idea of where he is. Blind shot from Kaizu as well. Zafarczyk, <sighs> pretending he's in the cram wagon here, sitting at the top of the hill. Now, let's have a listen into Gohard's team speak at the moment, Mojo, and see what they're talking about. Yeah, I'm going to get one. That's it, yes. Okay. I'm going to get one. 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 Зажай на горы, короче, блайнд вот сюда, да, и вот эшку между... Ну, ты понял. На нас, и которые? Да, да, да. Я понял. Кто им мешает сейчас ко мне в упор приехать? Да, по сути, ничего. Очко только. Я долго буду тянуться. Я вижу. Maybe Buff is saying this to Bush here to shoot me. Mm -hmm. But I'm not spotted, so they will need to spot me for that. Buffer is a three shot. Not, not three shot, huh? But you hit him. Yes. 
So I'm going here and 50B going with me here. Uh, need, need to try going to red line and aim to K1. Maybe we can shoot Batchet who stay in spot. Uh, it will be good for us. Let's go, Barry. Crowns need to stay on time and Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Mag, on this corner, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Just go straight across. So just stay here, going together and aim here. Uh, because by budget sometimes stay and aim. So you can stay, right? You can try to catch him. You can stay here, yeah. Wait, you push so far or we peek? No, 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 you, you, you just play. Okay, it's a big guy. Are ready? No, Nothing. No. no one, okay. Easter? Go back, go back. 50B there. Got it. Uh huh. Uh, be careful, now. Yeah, yeah, I just stay with the turret in this. Я могу башки кинуть вот так, она к нам стоит, если ее не отпустят оттуда, я могу кинуть. Ну, кидай. Ты сейчас Я кидаю, прямо переехал. На правую сторону надо переехать, там Ты смотри аккуратно, играй, потому что я вас не видел и... А, я с Тут ты можешь вернуться? Куда? На гору. Колти пейте кэп, колти пейте кэп, so far. We can just pay the cap, maybe with the... If here, we cannot... Кок, если сейчас внизу по всем инфа поступят, смотри, блять, аккуратно. I'm spotted. Uh, something under the track here, Bacha. Bacha, uh -huh. yes. Stay safe. With 50 Bs, man? Uh, yeah, you can just aim. No. Okay. But you take you can try and... Or maybe it was him to the window. No, I can't push the railways, dude. Like, it's... No, no, no. Ten, ten, ten Bacha, stay here. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, yes. maybe yes. Maybe yes. We could just try and maybe... We okay. just need some more info, really, about mouse. Yeah, I'm getting spotted all the time. Mouse actually stay here, like I supposed to but Maybe, maybe... Uh, I can cross maybe here with the ten track. Mm, I don't think we should. Mm. I Going think we just yeah five minutes just like three thousands boy. Mm -hmm. There's no one. Five minutes. We can try to push uh, maybe fifty B like here. It will be better because yeah 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 okay yes, here, yes, do it, do it. yes do it do it yeah please yeah go go fifty B to me really. Yeah. And this time uh, Baba Baba to the Baba is the same as that. Yeah, yeah. Can cross here, right? Ah, да я не знаю, там blind спускаюсь так нам. Тебе надо вообще к нам ехать. Yeah, I guess because so, you would spot it. I'm spotting this like entire shit here. Okay. Okay. Через спину или в Б? Через спину лучше. А на Си Джей сюда впереди к маму сюда шел. Ты перед маму сюда шел спину. Да, да, конечно. Окей. Бля, ты на бате. Ну ладно, я то уеду отсюда. Не, 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 я могу сыграть типа сюда к тебе. Не, не блайн прилетел. Потому что вам нужно будет блайн прилетел. О, прежде чем я спотил. Да, спотил. Spotted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. AP spotted us. Okay, T Titan go here. So Titan will push here, crown with uh, Batchet here, and we together here, maybe. I, I will try to check the mouse. The mouse, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to like uh, exclude the mouse from the fight, you know what I mean? We yes, need to leave yes, him out of the fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm pushing up. And we, we have the Babach in the fight too, so. Okay, so? I'm waiting for the timing. I need the light. Okay, how do you want us to push? Off, 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 off. How do you want to push? To, to railway, to railway, 50B to railway, to then to the to here and batch it with ground to. 50B to here? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Don't see anyone there. Okay, so you can hear there Gohard finding it difficult to find out exactly where Swift are, and now they are making their push onto the cap as Zafarchek has been the first one focused down here, and Gohard though he's overextended, engine damage he goes down at the same time, Fairware goes down in an instant. Swift have been able to hold out for this charge from Gohard and it looks like Gohard have just left it a bit too late to push in here just not having the information of where Swift were. Well they've said they want to take Maus out of the equation, they've done it but it didn't really work out because the focus fire from Swift was rather brutal here and they're kind of surrounded, they're down on HP, this is much, pretty much GG. Gohard were sitting for a long time trying to bait out Swift, trying to see if they could catch Swift coming at them, but Swift have no reason to do that. They're the defending team. Why is a defending team going to push all the way south of the map? They don't need to do that. A nice planned tactic there from Gohard, but Swift really not taking the bait there at all. And now Swift are on cleanup duty and Gohard are running for their lives. It's not even about uh, having someone baited or not. They were just trying to find an option how to push and get the least damage done to them while they're singling out the Swift tanks. And that mouse being so slow, he's not even doing any damage. But the push really didn't pay out. There was a great cover from the Swift there. They lost two tanks in first 10 seconds of the fight. And that pretty much sealed their fate there. Yeah, it was a, a very long match for posturing there. Gohard 
had that line set up and they're like, okay, should we push here? Should we push there? Should we push there? And you could hear it even with Niall. He's like, I'm spotted. I think there's a bat chat on the rails. And he's like, no, wait a minute. It might have been somebody through the window. And then somebody else was saying, nope, you were spotted because of somebody on the rails. And it was like they could never quite decide when or where they were going to make the push. It's not like you have a GPS on every yeah. enemy player. So you can really, you, it's a lot of guesswork. And it's a team effort, people saying what they think, and then commander has to choose mm -hmm. based on what they say. And uh, sometimes it's a gamble in this game. In this case, it just didn't pay off. Yep. Well, let's have a look at the stats in that round and see who was top damage. So uh, coming out at Mo, Chris picks Mihal off the wolf. All top four damage dealers are coming out from Swift, and then the next three coming in as being Gohard players. Well. <laughs> Pretty much they did some damage there, but it's just not enough because probably in the second page we'll see at least two guys with a zero to one shot done because they lost them in a start immediately and that's pretty much what sold out. There's fate. Uh, Kaizo actually on six spot with tier T10. Well, that's an interesting one. But there he goes, Zafarchik. Not even fired, the shot died. Failware. One shot in that 50B. That certainly didn't help their case. Yeah, yeah, about that. Oh well, so 2 1 here, map number two. We have round two of Himmelsdorf coming up. Um, Gohard just kind of leaving it late, really, for the push. And when they made the push, it was where Swift were. So, kind of a bit of a bad play, I would say, just going into exactly what Swift wanted him to do. As I said already, they made a wild guess and they thought they had uh, good coordinates on where Swift tanks are. There was a bit kind of a miscalculation there and the push didn't work out as they thought they would. So they just paid the price. It's part of the game. Like you have to dare to win. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. You always just use your best possible judgment at the moment. And after that, it's all about the players and how will they handle it. Some shells will connect, some won't. But it's just about a, a guesswork in the start of the game. Yep. Now, round two, team's going to switch positions. Gohard is now going to be defending against Swift on the attack. Let's have a look at the lineups and vehicles used. Is there going to be any big surprises here? Or is it going to be business as usual from both teams? Mm, Gohard has a rather aggressive setup there with T10. They actually might pressure along the 8 line maybe. They know how to do that from time to time. But Swift is also playing with rather fast lineup and only one Kran Wagen, so they can send him on a hill. And that 1390 can actually be a liability if there is no cap pressure here, because if Gohard plays aggressive from the start, the 1390 will have no business in the game. Yes, um, 1390 on attack. Okay. That's of course, um, it's normal. You yeah. can do a cap pressure with it. I7, T10, 103, batch at tier 9, batch at tier 10, two AMXs. Not really, well, I was going to say not really. I've already got an IS7 and a T10 there, and a 113 for Gohard. On lineups, I would probably give it to Swift based just on lineups. No. <laughs> Actually, in fighting, fighting regard, I like uh, Gohard lineup a bit more. I mean, it's not a definite no. You say, oh, that's really bad or whatever. Like, uh, it's not a definite Swift. no, but you did go no. Yeah, <laughs> well, don't ta get taken by it. I just think that fighting-wise, uh, Gohard has better potential there because okay. uh, Swift has a light tank. But Swift has a lot of rotation tanks, so if they position them well and maybe take out some of uh, the guys from uh, Gohard, let's say, early or, or in those rotations, if they stop them, they will, of course, outmaneuver them then by that. So it's about the opening and how will Gohard like to play this? Yes, how will they play it indeed? Are they going to go calm? Are they going to go aggressive? We've seen some teams going hyper aggressive on the defense, but I'm not sure if that's... I mean, you kind of play into the attacker's hands sometimes doing that. I don't like the moment. Uh, if Gohard chooses to play this low, I don't think it will be in their benefit. Because when you have a fast lineup as an attacker, you can then out-rotate them and find a weak spot just by driving left and right. And we know that Swift is a very patient team, and we've seen them drive left and right on some maps four to five times if needed. Yes, sometimes they can be really hesitant as to where they want to go. So, I mean, as something we did mention previously, if you kind of 
go aggressive on Swift, they're not ready for it. So let's see if that's what Gohard are going to do here. Round two on Himmelsdorf. They are the defending team on the blue side. And Swift, as the attacking team on the red side, Mojo, they are pretty much all going up over the hill. All over the hill, they're trying to avoid any kind of possible conflict with Gohard on the lower part of the map. While that is going on, Gohard is actually going for uh, cover in the city. They pretty much are gambling that uh, there is no presence of Swift going for the open par part of the map. That is rather bold, I can say that, because if Swift came there in numbers, they would already get the cap under control and Nile would pay the full price for it. But Nile is rather safe in that hold-down position there because the, the Swift doesn't have any tank destroyers, so it's going to be rather hard to shoot him, and I don't think they should even waste time on it. Free kill taking damage there already as he backs off in the AMX 1390. Nile in that position, that can be a real pain in the butt to try and dislodge in the IS-7. As everyone comes charging down, Maga gets the spot on Skylex, Wolf and Atmo and runs, but he'll be able to tell everyone pretty much Everyone's coming behind me, boys. Run and hide. He still didn't spot three tanks there, so he's not 100% sure where is everyone, but it's pretty much sold now because they see it. There is a trap there from Gohard, Failware and Carry Berry are waiting behind the corner, waiting to trigger themselves. How much damage will they get? It looks like Crispix and Atmo will be the ones going around the corner. Will they be able to get clips off? They do spot each other out. Shot for shot at the moment there. Actually, it's Carry. It's Failware is taking the most damage. He gets himself tracked as the back around the corner. Carry Barry spreading his shots across the rest of Swift as he backs off around the corner as well. Crispix, Atmo and Free Kill all taking damage there. Now, Carry Barry and Failware are in a bit of a dangerous position because they don't really have anyone else in their team to be able to help no, them. No, Mikhailov is also behind them, so in crucial moment he will come and take them out. Carry Barry will fall rather soon, and I don't think failure will do any better. This is a problem now. Gohard is split and just the Swift can just go pressure and do the punching all over the place. Failware and Carry Barry dead for not a lot in return. They've chipped health across all the different tanks of Gohard, but vitally they've lost two of their main damage dealers. Now there's a cap rush going on as well at the moment. Triple cap, 20 seconds. Gohard are going to struggle to work out who actually has the cap points here if they just put everyone in the cap. And Gohard struggling. Crespix cut out on his own here. Coca Cola and Zafarchik trying to take him down, but Zafarchik's been focused by the tanks of Swift. Big deflection coming out there again as now Maga's being focused. Skylex kills free kill. That is the team damage there, team kill. It's not a really important one because it's only a 1390. The more important thing is HP that's in advantage for Swift, number of guns that's an advantage for Swift. And they're just using the Pac-Man effect. They're just going and chewing Gohard up because Gohard allowed themselves to get split against such a strong push. Nile burning to death here in his IS-7. You can see the damage is ticking away there. Atmo coming around behind him. Nile has one more shot to take. Nothing left. He's on a reload as the Wolf picks up the kill. Swift winning this one. 4,599 HP there. Even with a team kill, Swift killed more of their own tanks than Gohard did. <laughs> you can say it that way, but we have Swift. an even game now. 2-2 two, two, and... Statistics we have on uh, how successful some team is on some map, they're just not worth anything at the moment. It's crazy. Go hard to win the first two rounds and they look really strong. Then and they, they come won into it on a map where they were rather weak. Yeah, and then they come into Himmelsdorf, a map where they're strong, and they look second rate compared to Swift. They were, they did a bad push on the first map, and on this map, they got split and. I mean, just losing your 250Bs like that for no return? I can understand the, the first game they lost when they had to push and they chose a bad angle maybe, but this one was completely and entirely just their fault because initial setup they had was not really a good one. They they were split all over the place, so they would counter-react something and their tanks were just too slow. That's what we said, like it's really hard to play against such a fast lineup that Swift has. Look at this, like five yep. guys there on the first page. Top four damage dealers again coming out for Swift. Um, failware. Um, yeah, I mean, Failware didn't even do any damage from that position. Carry Barry was taking the shots initially, and at least Carry Barry got some shots out. But Failware died in that position for nothing, and there was no reaction, no rotation coming back from Gohard. I mean, you said they only spotted out three, so that might have been part of the reason. Had Zafarchik been able to spot everybody, would that affected of what Gohard then react to? Would they have everyone came back quickly? Would they had time? I, it's not even about that. I believe that uh, Gohar took a risk because of this fast lineup. It was actually risky because he didn't send almost anyone to the rail, just Nile. 
So they were gambling, there will be actually no one going there. Uh, expecting actually the push because uh, Swift had a crown wagon. But uh, Swift just played too fast. And it's what I've been saying many times. That's a Pac-Man kind of tactic. Because when you just go and chew the enemy tanks like this, and there is like your six or seven guns there, and the enemy has maybe three or four, you can just not withstand the heat. We could see from the start the 50 Bs, Carry Berry, and Failure were just cut off from the remainder of the forces. If we saw it, Swift saw it also. They surrounded them with guns immediately, pressured, and made sure that the remainder of the Gohar can just not come to their rescue. It was a weak spot in their defense, it was uh, discovered early, and it was nothing to be done about it after that. Now we're going to be going on to Prokhorovka here, all squared at 2-2. Two, two. Um, it's kind of a make or break map for a lot of teams, Prokhorovka. They can usually, I mean, a lot of the time actually ends up being 1-1 one, one for teams, doesn't it? Yes, Prokhorovka is one of the most defensive maps we have at the moment, so it's pretty hard to break the defense, but we've seen it done today. <laughs> That's not an issue. So uh, at the moment, Gohardy will be attacking first. I'm really interested to see their lineups. Uh, will there be TDs? Will there be S3Vs, Grillas, uh, Crown Wagons? Because a lot of tactics will evolve and depend on that. Yep, it will be interesting to see the lineups and vehicles being used. Let's actually have a look and see for ourselves as we can look at the lineups available and the tanks being used. Gohard, again, playing rather fast lineup here. Three Bachats, Grille, I7-1 on three, RU. Swift playing with Kranwagen and Grille, so they chose against STRV that Utopia likes to use a lot. Uh, I would actually say STRV is, is a nice choice a lot of times, but Grille is overall more useful. Because you don't have to set up yourself so you would aim. You just stop and aim and you can, uh, I don't know, snap someone if you really need and so on. Yes, now triple batchats, double grill for each of them are used the same. So the STB and Kranwagens could be the difference here in how they're played. Well, STB and Kranwagen, of, of course, they are used when you want to control the rail from the outside side. So I guess there will be a lot of swift presence toward the forest side here as they're defending. And Gohard should be more than able to know that. Well... It looks like everyone is pretty much ready to go Mojo. All square here, 2-2. Two, two. Everything to play for here for both of the teams. Again, showing that this league is wide open and pretty much impossible to predict a winner. I don't know. One team's going to go ahead 3-2 in a second. We're about to find out, will it be Swift or will it be Go Hard? Let's jump into Prokhorovka. <laughs> Now, Swift, red team on the defense, go hard, blue team attacking. Swift with their fetching black and red camouflage, go hard with the rather fancy purple and black camouflage. Go hard going immediately for that village side, so they are willing to challenge Swift in to play their cooldown tanks. Maybe they even want it because Kaizu in that grille can really do a lot of hurting to them. He is positioned well, but look at this aggress aggressive approach by Swift. They just want to clear out the forest so they can play against Go hard tanks. If they actually catch Go a Nile, Nile and Coca Cola in the start here, they can win a game immediately. Hyper aggressive push here from Swift. We've seen Kazna crew doing the same, but usually only using something like three batch hats and they're not quite going in their favor. Atmo stopped. He's held up position, waiting to get a shot onto someone. Nihilator and Coca Collapse are spotted. Can they turn and angle their tanks to face these tanks? Nihil does. 420, no fire, but he's back onto these tanks. Another shot might come in. They're desperately trying to track him and hold him in position. Coco Collapse is there as well. Niles managed to get behind a rock. Coco Collapse is also behind it. Nile did take a lot of damage, but he's relatively safe at the moment. But he's got his rear end to these tanks, not his front end. Coca Collapse more or less saved him so far because he placed himself in front of the shells. There is a triple cap going, going here. 25 seconds left. Swift is actually not in a position to decap. Maga is waiting on a low, on a, on a, on a crossing, on a B line, and they're all around the center. This is genius from Gohard. They realized everyone from Swift was out of position. They've just gone into cap and says, well, they're going to have to cap rush us 10 seconds. 
Swift are just going to have to throw people over the middle here. Five seconds. There's no one can actually reset the cap. Crespix is going to have to do it. Two seconds. One second. No. Swift have been outplayed. Go hard. What a brilliant manoeuvre. Swift, you put too much eggs in one basket there. And that was a great read by Gohard. Fantastic play by them. Yeah, Niall was like, yeah, kill me, kill me, kill me, whatever, I go <laughs> around, <laughs> who cares? He's like, shoot but me. I care because you did no damage, <laughs> man. He was like, shoot me, come on, shoot me. Don't rush the cap, just shoot me. I'm going to try and get a tracking shot on whoever's running out first. Like, Maga's crossfire to do the exact same, and Swift are like, shh, basically. Like, they were just like, oh God, guys, we're, we're meant to be defending, and we're nowhere near the caps. They left no one to yeah, back it no up one. because uh, it would be a high risk. They risk this push that uh, Gohard might be split and they might catch someone in a forest. But it didn't pay off. They almost caught Nile, where it's almost are a crucial one here. And even if they did, it wouldn't really matter because all the angles were covered there by Gohard. There was literally no one to make it to DK of this kind. This was a great decision by Gohard, a good call by the, whoever called that shot. But uh, the only problem here is because Nile did no damage and uh, he's in my team. So if you want to be a punching bag, I just need to put someone else. I'm yeah. pretty sure Failware did zero and probably shot zeros out. Let's have a look at how little damage Gohard did in that battle. Because only three tanks were actually yeah, shooting the entire Yeah, but he doesn't time. have even a cap point here, man. Oh, actually, no, Failware comes in first there. So, yeah, it was at the end when, I mean, the cap was already Yeah, there was, there was a, because there is a six-second prolonging of the game whenever someone dies. So that's a yeah. bit of segment that we couldn't probably see. Uh, and they're just shooting each other until the time expired. I mean, after the cap. Carry Barry. Oh, Niall did some damage. Okay, thank you. Carry Barry, second top at the moment. Um, now, Zafarchik <laughs> and Free Kill. The poor RRUs. Goga Collapse, I mean, he wasn't meant to do damage. He was meant to just take shots or distract him. And, yeah, that was a really, really nice play there from Swift. It was a case of, okay, uh, sorry, by Gohard. It's like, okay, they're out of position. Everyone's there. Let's just triple cap. Um, great play. And that shows the danger of teams doing this. Like, I was talking before this about how um, Prokhorovka ends up being um, east-west. And when you end up east-west, if the defending team is on the wrong side of the tracks, on, on the east side, or the right side if you like, you have a protected cap. You can get in there, you can cap, and then the defending team has to rush. They have to be aggressive, and they have to be very dangerous in, in their approach to try and reset it. You kind of don't want to give the attacking team control of the right side of the map. You can say something like that, but they had an STB and a Kranwagen, so that's quite easy to deal with the cap, rather easy. But they were just out positioned because they gambled uh, that because they have those tanks, uh, there will be a certain play by Gohard, and it didn't pay, pay off because Gohard actually challenged their decision, risked, and went here. And uh, when their tanks were almost caught off, we've seen them do the tricks on other maps like on Ruinberg and so on, we know that they know, they play a lot of mind plays there. They just outsmarted Swift here, by far. And uh, the risk that Swift took just didn't pay off. That's simple as it is. The Swift had the tools. They just didn't have the means how to do it. They didn't have the opportunity. I think, I think we may get a lot of that from Gohard this season. I think we may get a lot of, well, we've seen them do this. So we think they're going to do this. And Gohard will be like, ha ha. Well, Gohard We're kind of in the first different. interview Niall gave uh, said that they're relying a lot of uh, kind of solo play and yeah. uh, that kind of uh, decision making, uh, which looked rather ridiculous after watching them first match played with the Suba, where they got wrecked and lost three to five. You know, and there was so much suicidal plays by their players that we were like, well, "What were you even talking about?" But after that, Gohard kind of picked up their pieces and uh, organized themselves, and they're playing really well now. Being second is not a fluke. And if they actually manage to win this match, they will actually be a first one in the league. Yep, um, it's all to play for right now. Gohard currently leading Swift 3-2. to two. Um, I mean, Mojo, we're currently waiting on the teams being ready here to go into round two for Prokhorovka. It seems to be a slight technical issue at the moment, as soon as we do find out what's going on, we'll be able to then give you guys the lineups. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's go it's hard start to get advantage now. Yeah, it's an important. This is very defensive map. Uh, there is like almost seventy percent, actually sixty-seven or something, of the teams in defense win, and uh, it's just been lost by Swift. So Swift is now in a position where they have to attack. We saw on Himmelsdorf 
that if they must, they know how to rush. But uh, rush tactics on Prohorovka rarely succeed. Very rarely. Very rarely, yeah. You and need you to, cannot you need even call these tactics by Gohar rush. This was not a rush. Yes, this, was was counter, just, yeah. this was just a reaction to a swift yeah. play. You'd have to... You'd have to have the positioning first to be able to do it, and generally teams will never give you the positioning to be able to... You don't have the bases, you don't have the protection anywhere to be able to do any kind of rush tactic. No, we saw even when, uh, let's well, say, Ding in the last Prokhorovka mm -hmm. played super aggressive, they lost Meritorious in a couple of uh, seconds yeah. to the, GRS. The only, the only maps that allow for rush tactics is on Muravanka, because you've got a lot of protection on the base, where it can only be kind of reset from two angles and on um, Ghost Town, because again, you've got a base that has solid protection that you can use or um, hills to use to hide behind. The only maps that allow you a real rush are the ones where you can come somewhere unnoticed. Yeah. So as we've seen on Himmelsdorf, there is certain ways where you can rush or Ghost Town because it has a lot of buildings to cover you. Morovanka, not so much because it's super risk and uh, teams can make easy crossfire to take you out if you're just going all in. So it doesn't really work that way. Uh, all the maps are more or less set up so you can deal with the enemy because you can see them coming and you can gather your forces, except on maps, as we said. Of course, you can even try to rush on Ruinberg, but it doesn't really work well also. I don't think we will see a rush here. It's going to be another calm play. It's just 3-2. to two. It's a nice advantage, but it's just one one game advantage. It's nothing special. Okay, now... We're still sadly waiting for things to be ready behind the scenes. So in the meantime, what we can do, Mojo, is we can actually watch the little highlight video that you and Daki did of what happened last week and why it was very important. So let's have a look at that video. I've not saw it myself. I'm looking forward to watching it. Welcome to Ruhrberg. The purpose of this video is to explain some of the tactics because of the highly defensive nature of the map. Now let's go over why Ruhrberg has such defensive angles. The positions around A7 allow for nice spotting and crossfire angles towards the AB line. To even further help this position, the tanks from D9 have great shots on the A line, crossfire. Usually, autoloaders are the best for this because they can clip somebody crossing. Lots of teams use the E8 positions or around there to spot towards the middle and the south. This tank can spot most of the map and is best supported from the F0 position who can shoot onto the cap and in the zero line. Then usually teams send somebody down the zero line, usually the terrain light tank from which he can spot the K line, but can also shoot the tanks on the cap in the back and can do a lot of damage. When the round has progressed, teams can take the E6 position and get another crossfire angle onto the cap. All of this together makes it extremely advantageous to the defender. Now let's take a look at one of the tactics used to break this defensive turtle. This is a tactic used from Gohard with a mouse. We can see him drive onto the cap and the tier 9 Bacha driving behind him. The purpose of this mouse is to provide a shield so the Bacha behind can be reset. This is to try and force a reaction coming out from the defender. Let's take a look at the positioning from Gohard and the general tactic used in this round. So you can see two tanks on the cap here trying to bait Ding into a reaction. You have the tier 9 bat in C1 who can go B line and cover the AB line but can also go to D2 and support from there. Then we have the object 430 in F2 who's spotting the middle but also blind firing the bushes in the little town on the east because of his great DPM. The two 113s here are hiding so they can't be spotted at any moment. Now, if they choose though, they could push towards the 6 line to try and shoot the tanks from behind. Together with the bad shot, which is in the south of the map, they are in a trap, but let's continue the battle now. So Coca Collapse in the mouse is sitting on the cap here. But the interesting move is about to happen in the south, where the tanks from Gohard are going to try and cut off a rotation coming out from Ding. If they do so, they will have a great advantage. You can see while Coca Collapse is baiting the cap, the three tanks in the south are pushing up and catch breakneck mid-rotation. In the meantime, the Object 430 is also driving into the middle road. 
Now let's take a look and see how the battle has progressed. You can see how four tanks from Gohard have taken the middle area, which Ding didn't seem to expect. The tanks can choose either to push into the little city, shoot the tanks from Ding from behind, or go towards the cap. All this time, there is six tanks from Ding out of the fight in the north side of the map. Safar in the 39 Bachat can choose to either help a beeline, but he also can go all the way back towards the middle to support his teammates if they choose to cap. Now we can see Gohar did choose to cap with three while keeping two guys in the middle. With Ding being out of the fight for too long, they have no chance to win this round. Now in another match, again, Gohard is going with the mouse, but a much different tactic as you will see. Just like last time, they have the Object 430 blind shooting and controlling the middle. Again, they have a batch that controlling the entire south area for rotations just like last time. Remember, also last time, Gohard had tanks in this area to catch out rotations from their opponent. These tanks are now located in the north side of the map and will stay hidden, but can push onto the cap whenever they choose to and push down the cap timer by a lot. So at this point for Gohard's opponent, it seems like they are bringing the same strategy from last time. This is the mind game I want to talk about, but let's see how it looks from Kazna's perspective. This is Kazna's setup to deal with this. Let's take a look and explain a little bit more on the map. They have a 113 here who could spot and shoot from behind bushes on tanks approaching. With him is the T62A who can cover the angles that the 113 can't see. Together, they have nice DPM. The bulk of Kazna's forces though is located in the little city from where they can shoot the middle, south and north. The Bachat can spot towards the middle, but he keeps getting blind fired by that object 430 we spoke about earlier. They have a T-54 lightweight in the specific position. Spot if Gohard does the same tactic from last time. This is the moment in time Kazna could have won the game, but instead of shooting the mouse, they should have permatracked him. Together with the 113 and T-62A, they could have permatracked him, but instead they tried to do damage, but it doesn't help as the mouse makes it onto the cap. We can see here that most of Kazna's tanks are out of the fight. This is the moment in time Piotr sees the tanks from Gohar for the first time and should have pulled around the mouse rack and sacrificed himself for the reset to save the round. Because they see the tanks from Gohar who they thought were in the south from last time, these tanks will now rush the camp and make it hard for Kazna to reset because of most of their forces being out of the fight which we've shown before. We can see how the Gohard forces reach the cap and will block Piotr from resetting. Maka, who has all the cap points, is safe. By the time Piotr realizes his mistake, it's already too late. Kazna tanks scramble and rush the cap to try and reset, but even if they did, it's too late. The mind game from Gohard wins the game. So guys, here you can see how two of the same lineups can be played very differently by using mind game and pretending you are doing the same thing, but instead you do something else. I hope this gives you a nice insight into Ruinberg and the tactics used. And there you have it, a nice little video showing you the main games that Gohard are doing now. Making Kasna think we're going to do one thing, but doing something completely different. Trickery is a big part of this game, as you can see here. There is also a sequel to this video about some other tactics, but about that later when the time comes. So far, 3-2 to two for Gohard. First game on Prohorovka won by them, yep. and I believe teams are ready. Let's, let's look at the lineups here for round two. Everyone is ready to go. Now, Gohard could be stepping up here 4-2, but Swift might be bringing it back to 3-3. Three, three. Mojo... Go we do hard. see an S tank being used. Yeah, Gohard defending with STRV, it's good for defending the forest, but also that means they don't have to actually position all the forces around the forest because of its great DPM. VZ, this is not a tank often used. It has no gun depression for the light, so it's usually used because of decent DPM and you can just chase around the tanks if you need it. Do you think that's, is that going to be used to try and... I mean, where, where are they going to put that? What are they going to in do a bush, it? in a bush, mate, because someone needs to spot for this STRV. But after that, he can just be used to run around and shoot. Okay, well, let's see. Is it going to be go hard or is it going to be swift? Well, in the next 10 minutes, something will tell us 
one way or the other. Swift, red team attacking, go hard, blue team defending here, Mojo. Swift, I guess I'm not going to stay grouped up like last time. No, I believe it. Not so go hard here. That's what I wanted to see. Well, we, where will the STR VTD actually go? We know that if he goes to the A line to tower the A0, it's really not the best position for that tank because it gets easily spotted and killed. They actually left a medium to spot the forest, not something I really expected. The light is, I guess, the, going to do the spot over the village line. And yes, he is. He is in a bush we've seen used yesterday also. So that's kind of a position that I expect a lot of teams to start blind shooting in the near future. Just to take a guess and say, look, that's getting used a lot by teams. Yeah, where Zafarchik is, this kind of uh, position, it's rather open, so you can do a good guess, but when you guess, it might even get, it might even be too late. Also, there are position on uh, C7, which you can use for spotting, so there is a lot of shooting to do there. Maga and Wolf doing the good old heavy tank shuffle in the middle here, face to face. Wonder who'll come off the better person in that situation. Now, Mihalov is going to climb up the hill. At the moment, it's quite stale, Mojo, but how's it going to go from here, do you reckon? Well, important for us to see is that st actually STRV, you can see him almost back here on the map, so he has the angles watching over here. And there is only one medium spotting for him. Why so? Because he doesn't need much more. He has good armor and DPM, and he will take out at least one guy coming to him. Maga is playing the hold down here. They already covered the other side. You can remember the STRV was there. And with Zafarchik spotting from here, this is rather good rounded up uh, defense. Now what Swift will do, they will probably try to blind shoot these bushes here from the hill, and maybe even this if they manage to proxy it here. Free kill cannot really see him. He will try to see when he is spotted and so on. So it's going to be a lot about reaction of these teams and how will the guys in the sixth line uh, react after that. Yep, it's going to be interesting to see here. Now, Gohard need to hold their nerve. Swift are going to have to make a move at some point, but where are they going to come from? That's going to be the interesting thing. Well, as I said, it's going to be about Swift and we know they know how to slow play. So they really need to... Focus on we need to see is maybe Crespix actually doing some shots with that Grille because he should. What's Kaizu and Karibari doing here, Mojo? It looks like they're going high progressive. This is so interesting. Like they actually think he's completely alone and they're pressing. It might pay off because the other guys are far away and they can go and hold out position. Kaizu and Karibari getting a kill here on Atmo and they have free reign on this side. They have no one to challenge them over the ridge line. Wolf took a shot there as well. Now Failware comes over to get a kill on the Wolf. Karibari carries over, now there's Crossfire coming in, Maga gets the kill on the Wolf, and Gohard are able to pick up two tanks here, although Kaizu and Karibari have taken a lot of damage themselves. This is something that Ding should have done in their match against the GRS, but they just didn't pick up their balls, sorry to say it, and do it. So, Gohard here playing super aggressive, but it's paying off, Dreamlike will be soon in reload, Skylis has only one shell, they will have nowhere to run. Karibari is down for Gohard, but Dreamlike is about to fail for Swift, and that means Swift will have three tanks out of the battle. Skylix with one more shot before he goes down. Who's he holding it for? He holds it for Zafarchik in the WZ. Now Skylix is on a reload as the rest of Gohard guns come into him. Now you see a batch out here of Mihailov pulling over the hill. He's getting shots into Failware. Zafarchik actually got the kill on Skylix there. It's a free damage farm here for Mihailov at the moment. He clips out and he's having to back off. He's got two more shots left. Coca-Cola distracting him there on the ridge line, and Mihailov has to back off and hide. Swift are down to three tanks. Gohard have five tanks, three of them nearly one shots, but hey, well, two of them nearly one shots, but it's completely in control here for them. No, oh, Gohard is so far ahead of Swift in this match, it's like light ears, man. Like, they're not even on the same level. Like, all the plays by Gohard here, except on Himmelsdorf, where they really sucked, uh, were on point. And uh, I like the reads they had, the calls in this here to push STB. It was a really good call. And it was like we said, go aggressive on Swift, push into them. And they don't seem to, they don't like it. They don't like it up them, as Private Jones would say. Now, free kill backing off here, going towards the rails. As Bold come over, he wants to duel against Zafarchik. Zafarchik misses with his shot. See, Crespix here line up a shot on Maga as he goes in to get the kill onto Mihailov, who has reloaded and could duel him here and probably win this fight as well. Failware trying to get the shot over onto Crespix. Oh, Crespix taking a shot there actually from 
the IS-7 of MAGA before he goes down, and this is just, well, Swift, it's time to talk about the next map. There is nothing Swift can do to co come back to this game. They simply don't have the guns, the HP position, nothing. Nothing of a sort can save them. I mean, Mikhailov, he can't even dare to reload. He has only one shell left. Mihailov reloads, so we'll just jump onto him. Coca-Cola goes in for that shot, connects. Oh, Mihailov what a low roll, man. Of health, 76 health. Chris picks on left on 152. Who's going to get that killing shot? It's going to be Failware. It's going to be 4-2. Go hard. Match point. Match that was a point. nice, crazy aggressive push. That was really nice to see. It's a match point, and we will go to steps where actually the most defensive map in the league at the moment, and Gohard will actually have defense in well, the first round. If they can get those claims. And I'm going to say only one more thing. Uh, so far, Swift played only two games on step steps, and they have exactly potato success. Potato success record. A potato success record is not a good success record. It's no. a bit like a tomato success record. Pretty much. <laughs> We've seen also a lot of good games here by Gohard, but even some mistakes they've, they've done. So they're like 50-50. But uh, overall, I would say they have a higher experience here. Yep, well, let's have a look at the stats. Crispix there in the grill, surviving for so long, being able to farm damage. Annihilator finally getting up high up there on the front page in the S tank of 3.5. So, I mean, both players there carrying a lot for their teams. Wow, Nile, with this kind of damage, you might actually perform uh, about 1k average per game. <laughs> Crispix getting two kills there as well was quite impressive. Wolf, free kill, annihilated, atmospheric. Pretty much also. I mean, the game was totally one-sided. There was nothing to be said. After Atmos that rotation by two Bachats... They, they wrecked was... Atmospheric, and then they wrecked the Wolf right after it. There, there was nothing for them to do. They simply did not expect anything like this. Teams do not usually push over there. And Swift is kind of ABC kind of team. They like to plan, to pre-plan, and think 50 steps ahead. And, uh, well, this was not an ex expected one. We've seen it completely. in reverse. It was the um, in Moscow where the team pushed right over the rails on, on the inside of the rails when they were, um, I think, attacking. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I was expecting something like that from Ding in the game they played. Yeah. But I mean, they it works, just... Because it works, because you get in and you're below, then the, you're in a depression, you can just wipe out that Ding one person in front of you. killed one tank and they decided not to do it anymore to stop the game and kind of play it slower from there. And actually GRS recovered and won the game after that. So this is something what I was expecting from them, but it just didn't happen. Yep. Now, are we going to get something out of the blue from Gohard? Are they going to go for some main games here on Swift? Are they going to go aggressive on Swift and just try and catch them reeling? Um, or are they going to play it kind of standard here on steps? Are they going to go like, we'll go up here for a claim, we'll go up there for a claim, and we'll just sit back and make them decide, well, we wherever see. you go, we've got you covered, mate. We'll see when it, the time comes, when we actually see the lineups, because before that we cannot really judge or make any, any guesses of a sort. Uh, what we can know, there are two games to be played here on steps, possibly, and even a tiebreaker is steps. So there is a high percentage of chance that actually Gohard already won this match because if they lose three games on steps, they really deserve by far to lose. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the lineups and see the vehicles being used. I can see a face off here between two separate tanks. It's going to be a battle of artilleries. Gohard in defense using that Lorraine Arty and also using STR VTD. This is not something usual and common. We can see Kranwagen usually pushes along the rail together with Lorraine Arti, who is positioned behind, and all the butchers just to prevent enemy team from getting in a, like some uh, superior positions. STRV, he's going to probably be left to just shoot them in a flank when they're crossing. And he has a good armor for it, so it's rather doable. I wonder if they're going to go aggressive, though. I wonder if Gohard are just going to be like, YOLO, and just go for it. Well, that kind of aggressiveness uh, along the rail is something we've seen many times by several teams. It's actually quite successive uh, tactics and viable one. It's not a bad tactic at all. Swift, on the other hand, they're playing rather standard, but they also have a Grille for back sniping. Not so sure about that choice, though. I really am not. Especially in a game like this, this Grille can be a liability. Yes. Um, 
Arties. I mean, the Arties could have a big deciding factor here on the battle, Mojo. I'm looking really forward to seeing how they perform. Interested, actually, to see who's going to be on the Artie for Gohard. Are we going to see a return to Artie from Nile? He usually plays the ones with the the bigger splash radius, and it used to be Diplomat on things like the Lorraine. Nile played it a bit, but uh, mainly in this season, as far as I saw, it was always a far chick. Okay, well, can Gohard make it 5-2? Let's find out. We're going to go to Steps. Steps, the most open map in the league. The attacking team appears near the rocks at the bottom of the map, and the defending team starts at the top. Bases are located near the railway and on the green. The best way to control them is to use the lowland near the second base. The attacking team usually begins the attack from the rocks and the railway, but sometimes they can attack through the green. Teams often drag vehicles from flank to flank, so both teams usually pick light vehicles with a good camouflage rating, but sometimes use tanks with a strong turret and even even SPGs. And even SPGs. Well, there's one each side. Go hard, blue team defending, swift, red team attacking, and well, go hard are actually pushing out here, Mojo. Interesting. Uh, Swift is doing again as predicted, going toward that one cap, while Gohard is again doing something completely different. They're actually boosting failure here. Let's see. And yes, well done from the start. Well done indeed. I believe he is up, so they're not going to even bother with coming to the other side. It's not something I really expected. They're expect, uh, relying heavily on Kaizu spotting from that C6 position. Safarczyk is going to get boosted. They're going to boost the Lorraine. Look at this. Oh, that's so wicked. Is it going to work, though? He can go, there are like ditches there and he can just shoot, sit and shoot from there. Okay. And the uh, important thing is, after they've done with that, we they can just abandon that side of the map because they don't have to protect the artillery piece. Big moment here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, you wicked little... Go hard! Go hard! You guys have been working hard in the training rooms here. So you've got Failware up there and Zafarchik as well. Zafarchik is going to have a dominating position to be able to rain shells down on him. Now all we need is a couple of spots for him. At the same time, if Zafarchik gets spotted up there, he will get wrecked <laughs> from Atmo. He doesn't need any immediate spots now. I mean, it's more or less about uh, cap control and certain angles. Like, he can really surprise Swift with some shots from that higher altitude because they will not expect that he can actually connect. And the thing is, is if they do is think he's up there on his spot and he's shooting, they're like, okay, we've cleared out artillery, and then they've got Batya up there as well. So they're like, right, okay, we can push that cap, you know? No, two cap is out of the question anyways for Swift here, but it gives a lot of mobility to go hard because they can just play around with five tanks and uh, they will know that their back is safe, always. I mean, he's got an easy shot into the cap circle as well, if anyone was in cap I mean, circle. He has an easy shot from any yeah. angle, honestly. Yeah. The cap circle is rather big. Um, so, Gohard baiting out Swift into taking position on the tracks. This is what I'm interested in. Can he shoot reliably on every angle on A3? And can he shoot with that RTP safely on A5 when someone peeks? Because if he can't, that RT is rather useless in that position. But if he can, this is something new brought up by them and it's a good good introduction. We might see more of this. It all depends on landing shots and spots. Swift at the moment seem a bit unsure about pushing forward here. They've gone up a little bit now. They're like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if we should carry They're not on. even spotted. They're really hesitant. Nile rocking and rolling with the S-Tanks suspension. It's hydraulics, man. It's a pimp vehicle. Oh, Kaizu taking a shot there from Skylex, 400. It's a blind. Yep. That's what I've said, like, uh, that position like can that position, be really... We saw, we saw someone, like, an IS-7 at the start getting shot. Kaizu oh, another again. one. You should run. Get out of there, mate. That's why I said, like, that position is something that a lot of teams know. And uh, if they are highly skilled, and Swift is a highly skilled team, no matter how the result looks at the moment, it, that's something that they will check out if they don't see the enemy. And we have an <laughs> epileptic <laughs> attack of <laughs> the observer. Mihailov spotted. <laughs> Roll shot come out. Batchat shoots and misses. Artillery. 
Maybe, maybe. Oh, go then. Go. Oh, Kai's now getting wrecked by his counter artillery. Atmo connecting you there into Kaizu. Massive damage, 889 damage. You saw all the modules and you saw all the crew members <laughs> lighting up. He was able to fix the modules, but he's down a gunner and he has only 103 health left. Kaizu is pretty much out the battle unless he can do something special. Now look at Mihailov and his positioning. He's rather beaten up, but what I'm interested in now is... Oh, nice angles there. That's the connection. Nope, I went over. Did he aim fully or he just shot? I think he perhaps snapshot that wasn't quite fully in. I think he needed to wait for like or a maybe second was the, maybe more it was the angle because like he's on a bit of a... No, it was rather clear shot. I think he just needed to wait for a second or two more. Cap being started here by Swift. This damage to Kaizu could make or break this battle actually when the fight starts. It's a super serious problem. Unless Gohard can start picking out damage themselves, it's going to be a problem. Zafarchik going for the Wolf again. Nope, didn't hit anything there. They're still hiding Nile. 1 minute 24, 23. I don't know, I mean, they can do a couple of shots with Arty in the meantime, but they still need to deal with the cap. Cap is the main problem here, and it needs to be resetted. And uh, in the last moment, you can always send someone to spot it out and reset it like that, but when you do that, you better make sure you actually kill a guy who's capping because you are going to lose a guy who's spotting, for sure. The Wolf is going to get himself spotted again in just a few seconds, probably. Will Carry Barry spotted. Free kill has taken damage here, 354. Don't know where that came from. Atmos now on the rails. Oh, he's going to connect with Carry Barry. Oh, no. Didn't Will we see an old-style push that uh, when a defending team actually gathers up on an A-line and pushes over Mikhailov position, or they're going to choose something different, we will see. But the cap was actually resetted. Nile spotted, blind fire coming out. It takes one, bounces another. Damage done to him. The wolf took damage there and he backs off from his area. Perhaps he just left the cap? Nope, just went back and maybe back out and in. Well, free kill's taking a shot as well, actually. Was that just a good blind shot from Nile? No, it was, it was a blind shot from someone. But... Uh, if it was aimed shot and he was spotted, he would not be on one. Only one shot down. That's for sure. See the wolf doing a blind shot here. Dreamlike just going in to tease the cap. I wonder at one point if Swift are just going to say, guys, let's rush it, let's triple cap. There is the boost here in the cap now. They are aware that uh, Gohard is not really high on rotations at the moment. But we really need to see how they plan to respond to this. This 25 seconds almost down to the cap. They will be able to boost it with the third guy and lower it on like 10 seconds in some moment. Gohard needs to do something now, like Skylex right now. Skylex is getting ready to push up, or it's going to be Crispix is going to be the one that pushes up any second now into the cap circle. Carry Barry's a sacrificial lamb. He's going to go out and get himself killed for the spot. Free kill and Dreamlike back off immediately. Arty coming in here onto Annihilator or coca Collapse. Which one? coca Collapse. Ow! 8-8-9 eight, eight, damage coming onto him. Instantly repairs all and heals all the damage you took for it, but that was a nice hit there from Atmo. It hurts, but there is two and a half minutes till the end. Still, they can apply similar kind of pressure, but if the time comes too low, the HP advantage will not matter because there is still that RT piece up on a hill. Go hard, taking a lot of damage here. Carry Barry now done to a one shot. Carry Barry now dead. He is the first tank down in this battle. Swift pick up first bloods. Swift still have all the HP here, and they're in complete control of base one. Gohard's really not doing anything to counter it. There's going to be a triple cap coming in in just a second, I'd imagine, Mojo, and they're going to put Swift on it. They're going to put Gohard in the back foot. I think Maga just got uh, shot for some more damage here. There is three tanks in a cap. Three tanks in a cap now. Blind shot coming out, perhaps not using that, and a wolf would be a good idea. 5-2-3, though, good shot, but, I mean, who's going to reset your cap? You've got three people in there. 25 seconds. Failure is coming down from the hill. 20 seconds in. Crispix lined up to defend us as well now. All three tanks can just back off again. They're just going to bait. Maga goes over for the suicide now. And again, Swift are probably just going to pull out and say, OK, we don't need to cap. We've got people out of position again. And, yeah, there you go. They pulled out only one guy. So there are still two left and the time is ticking away. So this is not a confident game for Swift anymore because if Gohard runs with one guy away, and look at this, this is a reset coming in. Swift is actually running out of the time and they're not pushing in. 
like they will actually have to go all in now and maybe cap with just artillery in the back. Failware took a lot of damage, but here's an important thing. We're down to a minute left. Now Gohard can just like keep doing damage away. If it comes to the end of it, the Lorraine's up in the hill. Swift are going to struggle to kill everyone because they're not going to find the Lorraine. If Safarchik can manage to keep himself hidden and Swift don't have enough time to cap. I mean, look at this. They do, they do, they do, they do. But there is still a possibility always for Gohard to just decap it because they still have enough tanks. The only problem for them is nice damage by Nile there. Nile's this really buys them the game. That blind recap, and he gets a shot into Dreamlike when they try and recap again. 30 seconds. Swift, you have to find Safarchik. <gasps> Another one. Nice play, Nile. Nile actually is winning them the match with these last two kills. Kaizu is running away. Runs but Zafarchik, to the corner. Zafarchik is the one. They have no idea where he is. And if he allows himself <laughs> to get spotted now, he <laughs> should be publicly hanged. Super sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky Zafarchik. You underestimate the sneakiness, Swift. Oh, nicely done, Gohard. It's almost as good as my Scottish accent. Thanks. Nicely done, Gohard. <laughs> there we have it. Five to two, go hard. Again, go hard with the rope of dope. You think we're doing one thing, we're actually doing another. I mean, maybe Swift could have, told, could have been able to tell by the way that artillery shells were coming. Um, but even then, it's not always a, a great idea to know where it is. And then you, they could have just thought, okay, the Lorraine's ran down into the bottom Honestly, corner. Honestly, with, with, with the time left and HP advantage Swift had, I think it was a super, super big